uh, a detainee that was injured prior to. Maybe it was from a motor vehicle accident. He's uh, now a DUI subject. Um, but his, you know, his right knee is hanging by a thread. Well, they, they have the right to refuse acceptance of that prisoner until – while we're still responsible for him, transport him to, say, back as hospital at that point, get him patched up, babysit him. Once they release him back to uh, us, for then we can bring him back and, and process. So that was basically the same premise this number nine was based off. Just if in case we brought an injured person over there, it didn't leave these guys solely responsible. It was our duty, uh, since we own the prisoner via this MOU, to bring them to, say, L&M, get them uh, fixed and then brought back. So this deals with a specific individual situation as opposed to uh, on page one, it's more of a maybe an overload situation. Correct. Some situ something's happening where all the police departments are being taxed. Correct. This would be like a case-by-case -case basis. Case but we it. just wanted to make sure there's some kind of language yeah. in there to cover that. I just wanted to clarify. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Daigle. Sergeant Masek, um, paragraph, nine in append paragraph 8 in Appendix B talks about the general orders and operating procedures at Waterford states that we've certified we're fully aware of them uh, so I'm assuming you've done that review or someone else from the town of East Lyme done that review correct that's what and going back when you look at say appendix a uh, covers uh, basically the whole processing and, and all that stuff for us yes thank you and that was important to me too is, is when our guys are in their house that there's respect um, and, and that was kind of, I think, the very first conversation we had, uh, Chief. And uh, and that that has to be the, the that has to be the uh, the attitude that we go into this with. Would you like to add anything else for the record? If there's no other questions, I'm just. Um, oh, I also looked at number four under the first section uh, that we would provide computer technical and mm. equipment support necessary. Uh, are our two systems compatible? We're making them compatible. Let's put it that way. Yes. Uh, um, uh, it's not just plug and play, but uh, we, yes, we are in the process yeah. of doing that. Correct. So basically, we have to, we need to put a computer over there uh, that will be in our same system. So when we do process a prisoner, uh, that will will be logging into East Lime system, and that way we get we will generate the reports. Um, so basically, we're, we're running a line which is already in existence. We don't have to do anything. It's the buildings already are attached via that. Uh, just a, a data drop with a small computer there that we can hook up to with a screen and basically just process them under the arrest module portion of our uh, of our system, our reporting system, and that will be all set for us. Now, once you do that, then Waterford is essentially in charge of that prisoner while they're there. While they're while they're being held there. While they're being held, correct. So, they're, my question is, does Waterford have access to that information about the prisoner and whatever is whatever is recorded in the computer? Yes, absolutely. Because part of this MOU, if you look further into it, discusses that we have to also provide the training. I think actually might be in that same line. So what's going to occur is <clears throat> when we start to fully utilize our IMC reporting system. Uh, the vendor, TriTech, is coming down providing a, a uh, training to our department, which I've already spoken with uh, Chief Mahoney about, uh, to have those CSOs come over since cause that's going to be a new thing for us as well. Uh, when we bring the, our prisoners to the troop, we own them from A to Z. Uh, having <clears throat> a second party in there to help process or where we can drop somebody off and get right back on the road is going to be a little adjustment for us as well. Uh, it's a good thing for the town. Um, but, yes, they're going to need access to that. So... He's going to obviously allow them to come over during that training uh, time and get familiar with our system. Then they'll have the login. Uh, so really what should occur is I process them, print everything out. There would be a drop slot, say cell number one. I, I would put it all the paperwork in cell number one that would be attached to that prisoner, and the CSO has immediate access. But we do want them to have access to that computer system just like they have access to Waterford system. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll call the I'll call the motion. I think we have a motion, right? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Motion on the table is for to authorize the first selectman to sign it. It's been re fully reviewed um, uh, by by the town attorney. Of course, he uh, helped with uh, the uh, attorney from Waterford. They they crafted this together, and um, I'm very pleased with it. Thank you for for making it something we can read and understand too. Much appreciated. Yeah, write that down. Uh, all all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Chief, thank you for coming over the bridge. 
don't be a stranger. Bring your wallet and come out to dinner some night. And, uh, we went to his town today, so... Uh, yeah, it, 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 thank you very much. Again, a grateful town, ha- having a big brother. Um, and I'll call you that, at least in the police world. You guys have been there. You know what you're doing, and, and you're helping us out when we, uh, we saw our need to improve our town. You're, you're there to help us out. What a partner. Much appreciated. And best of luck with all the process over on your side of the river, uh, getting through the, the signing of the document. We should be up and running in, you know, 60, 90 days or so. So looking forward to bringing our first prisoner over. <laughs> Hope it's not anyone I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Would the ribbon cutting be at a jail cell? I mean, at the, at the fingerprint machine? or you know. Okay, uh, we have a sign call tonight. Yes. Do I have to read the whole thing again, Mr. O'Connell? Well, you did the last time. All right, I'll do, I can I can do it again. So so yes again. Yes. Okay. Can't just be as attached. <laughs> it could be. No, he's. Saying. Okay. It's just that he has his virtues. So. Okay. Uh, this is a sign call for the special town meeting. I'll start from the beginning here. Uh, a meeting of the board of selectmen of the town of East Lyme was held. In the East Lyme town hall. Main conference room on March 15, 2017, East Lime at 7.15 p.m., because that's about time this meeting said. Uh, so, so I'll make the motion. A motion was made by me, Kevin Seri, and seconded by, we need somebody to, by Roseanne Hardy, that the first selectman be authorized and directed to call a special town meeting to be held at the East Lime Town Hall on March 21st. 2017 at 7 p.m. to consider the resolution entitled resolution making an appropriation in the amount of thirty seven million five hundred thousand dollars for the planning design acquisition construction equipping and furnishing of alterations and upgrades of the Lily B. Haynes Flanders and Dianic Center Elementary Schools and authorizing the issuance of thirty seven million five hundred thousand dollars bonds of the town to meet said appropriation impending the issuance thereof the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose and to submit said resolution to a referendum vote at an adjourned town meeting to take place on March 28, 2017 at the hours to be determined by the town meeting in accordance with the Connecticut General Statute section 7-7 as amended and the notice of said adjourned town meeting and referendum state the question to be voted upon as follows one Shall the resolution entitled Resolution Making an Appropriation in the Amount of $37,500,000 for the Planning, Design, Acquisition, Construction, Equipping, and Furnishing of Alterations and Upgrades of the Lily B. Haynes, Flanders, and Nyanic Center Elementary Schools and authorizing the issuance of $37,500,000 bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose as introduced in red at a special town meeting held March 21st, 2017, be approved. The form of the ballot label on the voting machine shall read as follows. Two, shall the resolution appropriating and authorizing bonds in the amount of $37,500,000 for the planning, design, acquisition, construction, equipping, and furnishing of alterations and upgrades of the Lily B. Haynes, Flanders, and Nyanic Center Elementary Schools be approved with a yes or no. The vote will be by optical scan voting machine. Those in favor of the resolution referred to in the question shall shall fill in the oval yes under such question. Those not in favor of the resolution referred to in the question shall fill in the oval no under such question. Absentee ballots will be available at the office of the town clerk as provided by law. The warning of the adjourned town meeting referendum shall state that the full text of the resolution is on file, open to the public inspection at the office of the town clerk. The town clerk is directed to publish as approved by law notice of said special town meeting in the following form. Town of East Lyme, notice of special town meeting. Electors and persons qualified to vote at town meetings of the town of East Lyme are hereby duly notified and warned that a special town meeting will be held at town hall East Lime on March 21st, 2017 at 7 p.m. for the following purposes. One, to receive communications from the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance 
with respect to a resolution entitled Resolution Making an Appropriation in the Amount of $37,500,000 for the Planning, Design, Acquisition, Construction, Equipping, and Furnishing of Alterations and Upgrades of the Lily B. Haynes, Flanders, and Nyanic Center Elementary Schools and authorizing the issuance of $37,500,000 bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. Two, to discuss the resolution entitled Resolution Making an Appropriation in the Amount of $37,500,000 for the Planning, Design, Acquisition, Construction, Equipping, and Furnishing of Alterations and Upgrades of the Lily B. Haynes, Flanders, and Nyanic Center Elementary Schools and authorizing the issuance of $37,500,000 bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary barns for such purpose. At its meeting on, held on March 15, 2017, the Board of Selectmen voted to submit item two of the call of the special town meeting to a referendum vote at an adjourned town meeting to take place at uh, the community center on March 28, 2017 at the hours to be determined by the town meeting. Three to set the hours of voting of the above referendum. Four, to transact any other business proper to come before the meeting. Copies of the proposed bond resolution is on file and open to public inspection to the office of the town clerk, dated to East Lime, Connecticut. This, it says 16th, should it say 15th? F 15th. 15th day of March, 2017. Yes. Right. And that motion was second. Thank you for, you should be really good at that by now. Yes. And you were. Thank you. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? We have a signed call. We have a town meeting scheduled. And we have a referendum scheduled according to that on March 28th, two weeks from yesterday, so two weeks after the storm, which canceled our first referendum, which is. Storm Chuck. Well, I'm not going to go there. Okay. But um, that, that, that concludes our new business this evening. There's no old business information reports, our communication. Absentee, our absentee ballots allowable for that? So absentee ballots are still going to be available for that. Okay. And the absentee ballots that were already filled out will be honored. But people who filled out an absentee, absentee ballot, I found out, can change their vote and vote in person. Um, so you can, although you vote absentee, you could show up that day and say, I'd rather vote yeah, alive it. or change my vote, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So they have up until that day to do it again. I think uh, if it would be possible to have a slide made up for the Channel 22 roll screen indicating that absentee ballots that absentee votes that were already made will still be accepted. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna, there's going to be a whole communi a communication thing that we're going to have to roll out because this is unprecedented in my years. I, I don't know, in your, in your 35 or 40 years here. Uh, have you ever canceled a <laughs> referendum? No. Uh, yeah, it, uh, Secretary of State had a tough time with that too. This is a tough one mm -hmm. with the storm. We had to do it in um, you know, an emergency session, as you know, as you well know. Um, uh, we'll make sure we roll out as much communication on that as possible. It's a good idea. Channel 22. Of course, a lot of people don't get that anymore, but we'll get it out on Facebook. Our town website and the is the ideal. And the, the sign out front. Well, I might not be able to get all the details oh, no, on the true. sign, but the date for sure. I think well, that's been the uh, biggest question. The biggest question. Yeah, yeah, whether for sure. They, whether they need to vote again. It's a lot of confusion, frankly. And I'll tell you what, our, our uh, assistant town clerk, who's been standing in for quite some time, she's right on the ball with that. Mm -hmm. um, so we had some great, decisive. Uh, answers from Secretary of State, from Bond Council, and from uh, Ed O'Connell. You've been right there for us. I appreciate it. This was not. <laughs> it's like the first time you've been complimented. That's <laughs> twice in one night. Uh, sir, you, you have been right on on this, and, and, and this was not easy for anybody to go through because we haven't been through it before. Much appreciated your service to the town, especially during this one. I, it was noted by, I think, you that on, on September 11th, 2001, there was a referendum going on somewhere in this state, and it was not canceled. Uh, the, the, the referendum moved on. Uh, um, so uh, it is unprecedented. So, uh, so yeah, thank you again. And if you'd like to, I don't know, if you'd like to go home, you may. Um, it kept you one minute later than 8 o'clock, but you'll give me the one-minute credit, I'm sure. Yeah.
<laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> no, that's why you're not. The, anyway, ex officio, Mr. Dagan, we'll start at your side to him. Nothing to add. Okay. Mr. Cunningham? Uh, my meeting got canceled this week. so. Yeah, that's, that happens. Yeah, yeah. So. Lots of meetings got canceled. Victoria, anything? Um, any uh, ex officio? Victoria is our audiovisual camera uh, personnel over here. Thank you for your service to the Board of Selectmen for over the last couple of years. And it's much appreciated. It's much better when you do it than when I do it or when Kevin does it. Uh, and, it's, it and I get comments about that. I'm sure uh, you get comments when yeah. I do it, too. Yeah. So. That's why so. I don't do it. You're the, you're the Steven Spielberg of East Lyme. How's that? So, so Mrs. Hardy? Mm -hmm. uh, the Commission on Aging uh, primarily discussed uh, the grant that came before us a couple of weeks ago regarding the bus, and they're still waiting for the parameters that are set by the state uh, in order to go out to bid for the purchase of the bus. Uh, zoning will meet tomorrow night, zoning followed by the Aquifer Protection Committee, Commission, and thanks to Mr. Siri for attending the Board of Ed meeting for me last night, as I happen to be triple booked. Oh, uh, two nights ago, yes. Okay, and I'll just quickly fill in. Uh, Board of Ed, uh, I informed, they were informed of the fact that we officially that day canceled the referendum and they were given the information uh, regarding what was what we adopted tonight and that it was, you know, in all likelihood going to happen. Um, um, one of the main things in their meeting, it was, it was sort of a brief uh, agenda for them, is they uh, made some interim appointments full-time uh, or permanent. And uh, one would be uh, Jeff Provost, who's, you know, came through our school's district, uh, stayed here as a, as a as a teacher, as an administrator, now he's the uh, permanent uh, Nyanic School uh, principal. So congratulations, Jeff, and there's several other, I think there were four other people uh, appointed and so forth. And they did point out that they are looking to hire someone to replace Judy Delu, who will be retiring, uh, Dr. Delu, who will be retiring at the end of the year. That was pretty much it from Board of Ed. Another success story for a former student. <laughs> what are your students? Yes. Mr. Jeff Provost? Yes. Fantastic. This is Hardy. You're the best. Well, I'm trying. I, I don't notice. I don't mention all the people that are insured. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but taught by you. That's great. Um, listen, we had. Uh, I spent. Um, I spent a good part of two years uh, trying to put together with many, many people um, the police commission, and then we finally got to a date where we were going to interview the five candidates for police chief, and it snowed last Friday. And we had to cancel it and postpone it till this week. And then we got to this place where we've been spending five years talking about new schools and school referendums. And we spent the last year really intensely getting to this place and uh, had a, having a referendum for uh, the 14th of March. And, you know, again, uh, the, the universe said, no, you're not going to do it that day. We're going to have a nice snowstorm that didn't become one. But um, but we, we, re we reworked the, the schedule and... Um, uh, we now have an official referendum date for the 28th of March. Um, our department heads, we had a, a meeting. We also had an emergency meeting before the blizzard that wasn't, uh, but still a significant storm. And, um, and even the uh, slush and now ice um, caused us to really get out there. I'm very proud of our department heads, especially. And then, of course, the, the crews, the highway crews, the public works crews, the water and sewer crews, parks and rec, and the school crews that go out there and clean these roads, these sidewalks, and these parking lots so we can get back to work. And we got back to work today. These kids got back to school. I understand that if there's no more school days, then graduation will be on a Friday, which is most appropriate. Um, and if we have one more school day off, then uh, graduation moves to a Monday, which is so inappropriate. Well, um, I think they're trying to work out something that we could still have it on Friday. Yeah, yeah there's um, blessings you can get from yeah, the Cardinals up in Hartford. Well, but, uh, if, you, if you make it to April 1st, yeah, you, right. can, you, you can set the graduation date. And if right. even if you miss a few days or something like that, that graduation date is firm. You can invite okay. the seniors to come back for a few more days, which I'm sure they'll do. 
But uh, so since the last meeting, I went to the uh, production of You're in Town at the high school. The kids did a great job. It's a it's a fun play. Uh, I saw it on Broadway years back with my bride. Um, went to the library uh, tr- board of trustees and uh, had discussions about budget issues and and ongoing things in our community. I met with the East Lime Ambulance Association and, and, and started talking about um, crafting a new um, uh, relationship, if you will. Uh, you know, we just need to get to the table and, and say this is what we're responsible for and this is what you're responsible for and uh, make sure it's a symbiotic and uh, balanced relationship. Um, and with the budget pressures that are coming, um, we we really need to make sure that we're covering all that. They do a fantastic job for us, but we need to probably document that better and also forge something to, that will last in the future. Mr. Salerno and Mr. Cunningham had an initial meeting with, to review the purchasing policies uh, with two members of the Board of Finance. That's ongoing. I uh, went to a uh, United Way celebration. It was a lot of fun over at um, the High Rollers over at Foxwoods. I was, only able be, I was only able to be there for a couple minutes, but on behalf of the town, our, our employees give a lot to the United Way through payroll deduction and they wanted to honor um, that contribution. It's a significant one, and people that uh, benefit are uh, uh, benefit greatly from our uh, generosity, our, our, our employees' generosity. Advantage Personal Training down at the business park, down at Liberty Way, moved their facility to the old Bridal Mall building, really revamped that whole thing, and they had a grand reopening last uh, Friday or Saturday night. It was fantastic. It's beautiful in there. Just go by and uh, poke your head, and they've done a great job. And that's uh, a proud business that's been in our town for probably 20 years. They started right here next to the post office in Niantic and have moved twice since. On Sunday, I went to Clayton Cushing's Eagle Scout ceremony. Proud family, the Cushings, and uh, uh, certainly proud of, of their their young uh, uh, Clayton. Uh, police Commission uh, will meet tomorrow. Well, no, let me do this in a different way. The, the Police Chiefs Association are being represented by three chiefs, I believe, that will be coming in and interviewing uh, police chief candidates for our town. There were 19 applications. Five have made uh, the cut to the oral boards. W- after the police chiefs interview the five candidates, our police commission will interview the five candidates next week. From that, we hope to uh, finalize a decision in the coming weeks. Um, and um, I also just, so you know, these are tough times when you when you consider what's going on up in Hartford with budget issues, et cetera. I sent a note to several department heads, not all of them, uh, very specifically saying that they do a great job and, and, you know, our budget's going to the Board of Finance. I would anticipate them looking over things with a fine-tooth comb, but most of our, I, I dare say all of our budgets are down to the bone. Uh, they are just uh, very efficient, and we're putting out the services that are citizens demand with uh, very little um, with very little money uh, compared to other towns but I also mentioned to these specific department heads that you know with the there's a dark cloud in Hartford that is threatening to come down Connecticut River and, and, and hang over our town uh, and several other towns of course all other towns but if we get the kind of budget cuts that the the, the governor um, hinted at, or that the legislator is saying is needed, then um, services will need to be cut in this town. And I don't think the Board of Finance is going about their budget process thinking about that yet. But when that budget, pro- when, when those cuts come, should they come, that we'll need to discover uh, a new way of uh, delivering services with less people and, and less services, frankly. We'll have to figure that out. And we have great leaders. And leaders don't sit around worrying about that, but they do sit around planning for things like that. And um, and we weren't specific on positions that would be needed to be eliminated. I'd leave that out up to discussions further. But um, but that's a real possibility. Um, you know, um, I think our our citizens can can shoulder some of the burden, but I don't want this just to be a direct tax hike to the citizens of East Lyme because Hartford delivered it to us. There's got to be ways that we can trim and find ways to um, balance any tax cuts and um, state aid cuts that will be coming our way. Never tax cuts, always state aid cuts. 
Um, that's my report tonight, unless you have, have any questions. Yes. Um, yes how are things going with the reduced hours at the town landfill? They're not going so well so far. Uh, so, so we're back to full schedule, if that's your question. Okay. Uh, we're back to a full schedule um, as of March 1st. So we're open every Saturday, um, six days a week. Most towns are open four or five days a week. We're still working it out with the union uh, that we're in arbitration with. If uh, it'd be one of our key points to try to win that management right back to determine our own hours as management. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, thank you for your service to the town. Thank you for watching and listening. Kim, thanks for coming and giving great coverage by the day to our citizens who are well informed. Uh, motion to adjourn. Wait, we didn't ask for public comment. Yet. Oh. Okay. Terry, any public comment? No. Nope. All right, sir. Motion to adjourn. See, I don't know the script. Second. Motion has been second. All in favor, say aye. Y'all right. have a good night.